Hello everyone, it's Laura here from the Visitor Centre with part two of our story about finding a design for the Clifton Suspension Bridge. And I'm going to begin today with a little recap. So last time I showed you this Gothic design by Thomas Telford, which was uh, submitted after no winning entry was found to the first competition in 1829. And as you'll remember, the people of Bristol really didn't like it. They thought the Gothic style was old fashioned and they thought that the bridge itself didn't really fit with the natural surroundings of the gorge. And then I showed you this castle design from the second competition, which was Brunel's eventual winning entry. Now, the judges, John Seward and Davies Gilbert, really liked the maths and engineering principles behind this design, but they were less keen on Brunel's uh, castle shaped uh, piers or towers. And uh, we can have a closer look at them here. You can see they've got crenellations on them. There's still a little bit of that Gothic influence in there. They've got little turrety bits. So you can kind of see why the judges said, OK, we don't want you to proceed with these towers. You need to find us a different concept. So Brunel's new source of inspiration came from halfway around the world. It came from Egypt. This is the Temple of Hathor at Dendera. And if you take a close look at that, you'll be able to see it's got these sloping outer walls. It's got this flat roof with a little flick up at either side. It's got these large rectangular openings. And if you're viewing this on a computer monitor, you might just be able to see as well that we've got these hieroglyphic style carvings in the walls. So if we move on and we take a look at this watercolour by Samuel Jackson of Brunel's new concept, his Egyptian thing, as they called it, you'll be able to see again, it has these sloping walls, it has the little flick up of the roof and it has the large rectangular opening. And in addition to this, Brunel's put two sphinxes on the top of the tower. He's put um, these, these wings, wing design, um, just above uh, the opening. And you'll be able to see again, if you look closely, um, all of these hieroglyphs in the uh, in the stonework. Now, he was intending that these would be iron panels that would be fastened onto the stone and they would tell the story of the bridge being designed and built. Which maybe it's a little bit narcissistic, but, you know, it would be interesting to people coming to visit it to be able to see that story represented. Um, moving on here, here's another watercolour by Samuel Jackson showing the view of the bridge from uh, further down the gorge and that gives you a really nice view of those sphinxes and again if you're seeing this on a computer monitor you can probably see those hieroglyphs all the way down. Now if we have a look at the bridge as it looks today you'll be able to see immediately it hasn't got those sphinxes on, there's no wings, there's no decoration and those large stone plinths at the bottom where the where the anchorage pits begin are now the toll houses. So why wasn't the bridge decorated in Brunel's Egyptian style? And the answer for that is because of money. Um, once they calculated the costs of producing the bridge and putting on the decoration, they soon realised that it was getting quite out of hand. It was a lot more money than they had in the bank. And so the bridge committee said to Brunel, OK, you've got the contract. We want you to start work. But before you do that, you need to strip back the bridge so that you can meet the budget. And in order to do that, Brunel took away pretty much all of the decorative elements. We think potentially he had intended to, um, you know, reapply them to the bridge later on in the project where he's got more confidence from investors and more money coming in. But of course, he died before the bridge was finished. So from the start of the build process in 1831 till the time it was finished in 1864, um, there was never any further work done in order to get those ornamental parts of the bridge put in place. And I think probably today we appreciate it for its simplicity. And if it had been decorated as Brunel had originally intended, maybe we would find it a little bit too ostentatious and over the top. So in a way, he's created something that is, uh, you know, can be appreciated by our modern sensibilities. So obviously we're in lockdown now and I'm not able to come into the visitor centre to create video content for you from the exhibition, uh, but we'll continue to make these videos and uh, tell you different parts of the bridge story. So thank you very much for watching and we'll be back with you soon. Bye.